Hello, friends and family. Welcome back to Gay by Gay. Hi. We're happy. I really you. hope my family's not listening to this. Can you imagine? I think can I you imagine my nana listening to this? I ha- oh. <laughs> she she would be very concerned. I mean, when my sister wore a ball gown, she mm-hmm. did ask her um, if she was decent underneath the yes. ball gown and if she was wearing a shift under there so that uh, no one could see her legs no. underneath her ball gown her floor length ball gown mm-hmm. anyways moving on <laughs> i haven't sent the link to my mom yet haven't even told her what it's called haven't it's not yeah. a, that's maybe not a bad thing my i should send it to my sister though this. i think she would my sister would love this yeah she would love that episode about my dad i oh. would never yeah. send this to my sister no no you wouldn't your sister would hate it she wouldn't listen to it <laughs> She, no, she would not. No, she would not. Episode, like, this is stupid. And that's exactly. Yeah. I don't know why you gave her a British yeah. accent, but that's exactly. Yeah, what I did saying. not say it like that. <laughs> you, did, you did too. Oh my god. Okay, so it is the week of New Year's. Hello. Uh, first off, I, I uh, did you just say hello? Hello. <laughs> hello. New Year's. Hello, twenty twenty one, almost. Almost. Dear God, let's just end this year. But we <laughs> hope you, we hope you all had a good holiday season. Um. We hope that your restrictions weren't so much mm-hmm. that you couldn't get together with family or whatever. We hope that you found a little bit of peace and happiness over the holidays. Um, but Something I haven't had in a while. <laughs> peace <laughs> and happiness. <laughs> but uh, we kind of figured it would be good to address the elephant in the room of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Um, because originally when we were planning to do these episodes, we had said, oh, let's do, you know, New Year's resolutions and we'll do, you know, a year in reflection. Well, the thing is that as we were recording that episode, we started realizing that we could fill an entire episode with just how we handled COVID itself. So we figured, you know what, screw it. Let's just get it out of the way and talk about it. it. But this is what I mean, yeah. is that we all handled it very, very, very yeah. differently because oh, we God. all have different yeah. personalities. We each faced a different challenge. And, you know, <laughs> our year was so much more than just COVID because we were going through regular life, but COVID had such an impact on everything that I feel like if we didn't address it, mm-hmm. uh, we, we would just be ignoring, yeah. you know, yeah. big old Bertha in the room yeah. here. Oh, like, we have a realist, a pessimist, and an optimist. Yeah. Exactly. So... so um, just kind of going down the list here, Aaliyah, let's just start with you. How did you handle COVID? Um, I mean, you weren't even in the country when no. COVID, re- <laughs> like, we had been hearing about it for weeks. Yeah. Because I know, I, 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 like, like, what, I had heard about it first because I remember looking at you guys and I remember, uh, this was right after that, um, Ukrainian flight was shot down by Iran. Mm-hmm. And I remember discussing it with my older sister um and she was talking about it and i had looked at her and i said yeah i'm more concerned about this new disease coming out of china have you heard about it and uh within like what the month after that like everything just completely went up yeah like ass over tea kettle like completely turned upside down at first i thought it was a joke like i didn't think it was a real thing because i because i heard it was called corona so i was like people are like making this up it, it sounded like it should be a fake thing, but unfortunately it wasn't. Yeah. And I followed mm-hmm. its progression as it started spreading. And I was like, this yeah. is going to be something unlike anything yeah. we have ever seen I, before. I was yeah. really distracted because I was caught up with my trip. Mm-hmm. My yeah. first interna- international trip all by myself. My first trip in general all by all myself. All by yourself. My first time on an airplane. That's yeah, and, and yeah, this you went like right before. I know mm-hmm. you got back. From your London trip, because you went to London, England yes, for I dance. Did. Um, yeah. You got back literally, I think, two days before they closed yeah. the borders. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was crazy. Like that, that was it. Two yeah. days. Like she came within a hair's breadth yeah. of not getting back my, into the country. My dad wanted me to come home early, but it would have been like three thousand five hundred dollars. Oh, people dollars. were begging for tickets. People and were spending out I the know. ass to get a ticket home. I know, and I was like, and I have my ticket already. Because I, I remembered messaging you, and I said, Aaliyah, yeah. no matter how much people offer you, like, do not sell your ticket. Yeah. I was yeah. like, you need to get back yeah. home. Do well, not sell your ticket. It was a uh, kind of nice. It was nice while everyone was freaking out at home because you guys actually had to stop doing in person classes for dance like, while you were gone. While I was gone, because you left and we were doing in person mm-hmm. classes. Yeah. You came back and we were locked down. Yeah, I know. Like what a difference. Like you came back to a whole different world. You went across the sea, yeah. came back, oh, and yeah. it's like you popped into a parallel universe where yes. everything was just yeah. shitty. I remember the last night I was in London. We had gone out for dinner and we were. No one was wearing masks. We were in person. And I remember having dinner with a couple of my friends and their parents and um, one of the assistants who I got really close with. Uh, that assistant is gay. And I was very excited about that. She said the podcast. <sighs> I should. Oh, my gosh. I should. She's awesome. Um, I'll, I should tell that story. Oh, tell we will story. one day. Yeah. We will. I think that has a huge correlation 
to me realizing I was gay. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> anyways, um, no, I had dinner with them, and I remember sitting there and thinking, I was like, yeah, they're in lockdown at home and stuff, but I got to sit there and enjoy my meal and mm-hmm. enjoy my time in that place. Little did you know that it was, yeah. like, one of the last ones you would get for, you like, a year, out. basically. Yeah. I was freaking out. I was very worried about you Everyone getting Everyone was freaking out about me. Yeah. Everyone was calling... My mom said everyone was calling her, asking me when I was going to get home and stuff. We we were all very concerned. Like, I know I was I talking... I a few yeah. times. Yeah, I was talking to you, like, every couple of hours, yeah. updating you on what the border situation yeah. was like. And I was like, Aaliyah, if I message you and say, get home now, like, I mean, get yeah. home now. Yeah, luckily, however, She'll, she would have came and got you, like, on her broom. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes I would have. Flo- no, no, no. I ride a vacuum cleaner. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yes, I would have yeah. gone on my vacuum cleaner, and I would have flown across the ocean and picked you up Such and brought you back. Mm-hmm. I remember, Sucked you up. <laughs> I remember getting to London and having the airport being relatively empty and then going home and it was packed yeah. of people trying to get back to Try, where they came trying from. to go back to where they came from yeah uh, number one who the hell is visiting canada especially because um, you were obviously at the winnipeg airport oh it wasn't the winnipeg one it was the london one going okay. there because it's a oh, major yeah, yeah. airport okay i was gonna say like um, um, well then again i can kind of understand apparently wanting, it's a major like, european airport though i i can understand desperately yeah. wanting to get out of winnipeg mm-hmm. before everything shuts it's down true. too because yeah. i wish i had escaped while i had the opportunity <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, even Get at the out. airport, no one was wearing masks yet. Like, oh my god! No, was pretty, not at all. Yeah, it was they were different. so worried. Then why weren't they wearing masks? I don't know. No, no one knew how much this was going to be yeah. a serious thing yet. They just, I need to get home before the borders close. That's what that, yeah, that was okay. the big no thing. No one was worried about, get, not a lot of people were worried about getting it yet. I think at that point, the idea was trying to keep it out of the country. Yeah. And we very quickly realized that that was not going to be a yeah, thing. Yeah, because... But I know you came back, and I had warned you right before you came back. Yeah. I was like, Aaliyah, you know that you're going to have to quarantine yeah. for two weeks. And you, at first, had thought that I was just yeah. kind of joking a yeah. little bit. And I was like, no, like, dead ass yeah. serious. Yeah. You and your family, because you're yeah. coming back from overseas, have to stay in your house was, for two weeks. It was kind of nice, because I didn't have to feel that bad about it, because we were ha- we were having the Zoom classes anyway, so it wasn't like I was being left out. Mm-hmm. No, not at all. Because I would have felt horrible about you, that. You would have been far more I would have been mortified. Yeah. <laughs> About having to miss, yeah. like, the in-person classes. Yeah, but we, we had already had to move like online. In suit, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You would have. I would have stayed out the window and watched. Yeah. You would have been like, please. <laughs> Climb up the to the top windows and looked in. <laughs> be like, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I, I didn't quite see that. And then <gasps> immediately after quarantine started and... At that point, we were still expecting to go to competition. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We we had thought, like, we we got so close. Um, you have to realize, to competing that year, we were within two weeks of our first yeah. competition. Mm-hmm. And we lost Like, the week everything. before, it was like, yeah, we, we lost we're not doing it. everything. And, like, oh. yeah. and just kind of um, moving on from think, kind of your situation yeah. to what Charlie and I were going through while you were gone, yeah. we were very much in gear-up mode because, yeah. you know, we spent a couple of like those last couple of weeks really pushing yeah. and getting our stamina running up, running everything, cleaning everything, costume runs, hair runs, yep. makeup runs, like everything that we need. We were within like two weeks or like even closer. Like I think we were like a week and a half yeah. away. It was like not, you know, the whole, oh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Yeah. Like that's what it was for us. And we lost everything. And, you know, at first I kept saying, you know, we might miss the first one. We might miss yeah. the first two. But, you know, we we'll get to, we'll get to the rest of them. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully they'll move the competitions to over the summer. And little did we know we would not get mm-hmm. to compete at all. I we cried. lost we yeah. lost everything that we worked for. And I don't think I can put into words how devastated yeah. I was as the choreographer and as the teacher to see everything you guys had worked at and everything that I had worked at mm-hmm. just completely go up in flames. I remember when I first got back, I was so, like, motivated, ready to go. Mm-hmm. And then I, I kept You being, were in gear up mode. You were like, let's go. I kept being motivated for, like, a long time because I know I did the Chloe Ching challenge. I was, like, gearing up. I was yeah, ready to go. Oh, that was me. We were, I, re- we were really pushing in quarantine to stay in shape because yeah. we were like, we may only get, like, one week I actually to go asked. back to the yeah, studio. I looked I awesome. We yeah. were like, we need to work. Yeah. We need to make sure that we are ready yeah. to hit the stage the second they left quarantine. Yeah. And they never did. Yeah. I was going and on I runs, then, like, every morning. And then I remember yep. when we heard, you know what, there's probably not going to be competitions at all this year. I was devastated. I had and no I motivation up. to do that, anything. That's when we I hit kind of yeah. May. And, you know, originally the idea was that, oh, you know, they pick new dates over the summer. Yeah. So we might compete over the summer. I knew. And was. at that point, once we got to May and like, we saw everything, and it was just like, <laughs> we're not, not going to get to go. And I remember one of the hardest things I had to do was sit there yeah. on that zoom call us. with everybody and say 
we need to talk about which routines we oh want to keep God. and which routines we are going to put to rest. Mm-hmm. It very much, I, I don't think I can have a better way of explaining it than to say that it's very much, for all dancers, it's hard to let go of your routine at the end of the year. To let go of routines that you never got to perform on stage. It very much felt like, and you know, I couldn't even put into words how upset I was. And I was trying to very much hide it from all of my students. I was devastated. Because as the choreographer, each one of those pieces is like a little piece of me. Yeah. And I remember, I'm a very private person. I am the type of person to face things head on. And then when I get home, I have a breakdown. But I do it by myself. I don't let anybody Mm -hmm. see me. And I remember I had actually come over. I'd gone over to my mom's house one day and I remember just sitting there on the couch and she looked at me and she said, Abby, are you okay? And I just had a full blown meltdown Mm -hmm. there on her couch, which would never happen. I said, I don't understand why I'm struggling with this so hard. And she looked at me and said, well, Abby, I very much imagine that this is what it feels like for you, what any woman would feel like having a miscarriage where, you know, you've spent so long cultivating. She said, you've literally spent nine to 10 months cultivating all of these routines, all of these little babies for you. You know, you've spent time on them, you've worked on them. And then at the last second, all of a sudden you miscarry and now you have nothing to show for it. You have lost everything. And that is the best thing that I heard because that's exactly how it felt to me. It felt like having a miscarriage a week before you give birth and realizing that there is no baby to love. Yeah. There is no baby to hold. There yep. are no memories. There is no nothing. Yep. All I have are the ghosts of what could have been. And that was so hard for me. I yeah. think I was devastated. The hardest one for me was like my solos. But yeah. for some reason, the hardest one for me was Undertow. Our trio. Yeah. The trio. It was a very emotional trio that you last, guys worked damn hard on. It was a last on. minute. A last minute. <laughs> it was a last, last minute, minute thing. Yeah. Like we literally, we finished... I think I we we finished remember. the week. Aaliyah was leaving on like the Friday. Yeah. We had finished it the on the Wednesday before. because I yeah. had changed a bunch of yeah. stuff in it, uh, and I had said we need to get these changes down yeah. and finished so that like when got, Aaliyah comes we back, we can really go. Late on it yeah, too. we did, and we finished it because really we originally weren't going to do anything. Yeah. And then at the very last minute, I looked at um, you two and one other person, Kaylee, and I had said, "This is the trio I've been waiting yeah. for for this music." Yeah. Because for me as a choreographer, I always wait until I find the right people. I have a million different ideas, but I will never put those ideas into motion Mm -hmm. and I will never start to work on these ideas until I find the right people to fit the routine. I don't make... But that's not necessarily true because when it comes to my solos, I make routines that fit the person. So it really depends on what I'm working with. It depends on what it is. But I had had this concept for a while and I found you three and I was like, this is the group that needs to do this because they will put on stage exactly what I'm yeah. looking for. I just think it was hard for me because we worked on it. Like, I, I don't even know how to explain it. it. It was holding out hope and then yeah. just going, we'll do it, we'll do it, yeah. we'll do it. You know, we've got hope. Yeah. We'll get to compete later. I, uh, I, we might miss one or two competitions. Yeah. And, and then was, it was just realizing we had nothing. That was a routine that we fought for. I remember you saying, it was. you're like, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it because it's so last minute. Yeah. And you're like, no, we'll put in the work. We'll do we'll it. Do it. Yeah. You guys put in oh. so much work. Yeah. And, I remember and we, we lost it all. We recorded it for the first time. It didn't look yeah. that bad. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. So I think losing that routine was probably one of the hardest. Yeah. I think I, one of the other hard things for me is that we don't even have a record of what we worked nope, on because we didn't have an we opportunity. We everything on YouTube. We normally do on our YouTube channel. Not this YouTube channel yeah, yeah. for Gay by Gay, but <laughs> our, our dance. dance YouTube yeah. channel. Yes, I know, multiples. <laughs> Look at me go. Um, but we usually post all of our routines. And the hardest thing to me is not having anything to look back on because there are times that I'll go back and watch everyone's old routines and see the growth year to year. And I feel like we're just missing an entire year. You know, we had students, um, one of our youngest students who was still a mini at that point, she had gone from one year struggling to learn her choreography oh mm-hmm. to all of a sudden doing like a borderline elite yeah. like acrobatic elite, routine. She's an elite mini. Yeah. She, no, she no. is. And I feel so bad that I don't have this yeah. record of the year the that girl. she really learned all yeah. of her tricks and everything. Because now you would never know. Um, we are actually trying to get her funding to compete yes. at the, uh, the World Cup of Performing Wobby Arts Wobby. as a contortionist. Yeah. Wobby you go But, you know... She, we're trying to find her the funding so that she can compete as a Canadian delegate mm-hmm. under the act of contortion. Yes. She went from one year not being able to do any tricks. She couldn't do a walkover. Barely she being she, able to do a garage tape. She couldn't even do a chest stand. Yeah. yeah. And then, she walked in like, like the next year, yeah. she is an elite contortionist learning some of the same tricks mm-hmm. you have, Charlie. Yeah. And 
it, it's so hard because I don't have a record it's so sad. of her growth. Yeah. I don't have a record of your growth. I don't have a record yeah. of anybody's yeah. growth. I don't have a record of some of the students who didn't get to compete with us this year because their oh. parents didn't have the finances. So sad. Mm -hmm. I lost everything that those students worked for in an entire year. We lost? And we have no and record of it. Here's them. the thing. A lot of... Um, I know a lot of performers out there like the growth and like the classes and stuff, but there's a lot of performers out there who do it for the performance. They do, and we didn't get we that. We missed out, and the girls who were with us, and that was their first year, they dropped out now this year. Yeah. And they will never get that. They will never get, well, not with us at least, we'll never get that experience. Yeah, I'll never forget I'll, that one person, but we're not going to talk about that. I know <laughs> that a couple of them have completely stopped because... Yeah. The quarantine has really affected a yeah. lot of performers very yeah. badly, where a lot of them are completely dry. I've known girls who have completely stopped dancing, yeah. completely stopped gymnastics, completely stopped all of that yeah. sort of yeah. stuff because they just can't do it. Yeah. It's so sad. They spent so long in quarantine that it just ruined them. Like, people would think that quarantine would help you get better and, like, be a time for, like, no. self-love self and self-help, but everyone says worse. Everyone says worse. it, but I'm sorry. Um, is anybody... Like, I know... Yeah. I got so out of shape mm -hmm. when I was in quarantine and then I went back to dance and I started yeah. getting back yeah. in shape and now that we're back in quarantine like my yeah. mental health is wrecked again yeah. my body health is wrecked again I think I had really I think I had abs right up until you were like okay so now we need to choose what routines we're gonna get rid yeah. of and, and at that like, point oh. the devastation set in yeah. and we just lost all motivation yeah and you know getting back in September getting back to the studio and everything we had that new motivation new year and now that we're back in lockdown and we're like, yeah, we really don't know if competition is going to happen again this year. Yeah. I feel like all that motivation is gone because yeah. we're not even done. Normally, normally by December, I like to have all of our choreography oh. done. We're not even halfway no, done yeah. most of our routines yeah. yet, if I'm really honest. I think because you were saying you were thinking of cutting some routines even. Because when we get back, there's going to be almost no time to yeah. work on them. Yeah. Yep. Mm, sucks. It, it's awful. Heartbreaking. Quarantine and COVID have absolutely wrecked not just our... I'm not going to say that it wrecked the studio. I'm going to say that it has wrecked the performing arts industry. It has wrecked so many things. I mean, I look at a lot of the things that I love the most. I love live theater. Mm -hmm. uh, no Broadway, no nope. Cirque du Soleil, no yeah. traveling, no off-Broadway, no live performance at all. Yeah. You know, and that breaks my heart. I mean, and even, even looking at school students who don't get to do band and everything yeah. because you're blowing through the instrument and you can't, you know, you can wear a mask when you're singing, but you can't when yeah. you're wearing wearing an instrument <laughs> when you're wearing an instrument How, however i will say the one good thing is that it put a lot of free at home resources into the world especially for dancers mm -hmm. um, it did i can go the bria space cli yeah. studios yeah that kind of thing but even like the free stuff for the kids at home who don't have the money there yeah. is now yeah. resources out there for that i remember brian out. friedman doing like a yeah. whole that's amazing class yeah. and everything like that was amazing the, the free stuff oh like uh oh <laughs> for the people out there who haven't gotten the chance to take a convention stuff like that yeah. because it's yeah. so expensive oh yeah just getting to take classes with these sort of uh world renowned uh, choreographers absolutely it was a huge opportunity most, like, let me, huh. it just breaks my heart people who have really bad home life yeah like and they can't it's and you, that that has been one of the so hardest horrible. things and you know as much as i have been going through this very bad mental space having lost everything and feeling very much like i'm losing everything again like i'm struggling with this idea moving forward where we may not get to compete again this year and it very much makes me feel like why am I putting in all of yeah. this work and all this effort if I'm just going to lose everything but again then, a thing I think about is well why are we doing it if we're not if you might not be able to compete but then another thing I think about is what if we do get to compete and we're not even I, ready I know and it's the that struggle right yeah. it's the struggle um it, the hardest thing for me to watch is how it has affected my students mm -hmm. because I call my students my kids. We've talked about this before. They mean the absolute world to me. You have no and my... watching some of you oh. guys struggle, watching you struggle with the quarantine, yeah. Aaliyah, because I you are was... such a people person. Charlie, I... watching you go through that depression yeah. was That's very right. hard. Yeah. And I know that there are a few of my students out there who have very tough home lives. And I know that they get through every single day because they look forward to coming to oh, the studio. The only reason they do anything. Is they for get dance. through their home life because they know that the studio is their second home and that they can come there if they need a safe place. Knowing that right now the studio is closed because we can't gather is very hard because I know that these students are left without resources and they're my kids. I want to be there for them. I know that their home lives aren't very good mm -hmm. and it scares me mm -hmm. that I can't reach them right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, they are part of my family, and I want nothing more than to make sure that Just they are either. okay. And yeah. I can't do that right now. 
It's so hard. It, it's awful. I think one of the hardest things for me was losing my pets and some family members. Yep. Not due to COVID necessarily, but I lost a lot of things during COVID. It, it, it I feel like things happen every single year that are hard to handle. Mm-hmm. I think COVID being an umbrella over everything mm. has made everything harder. Any losses, you know, normally you could escape to dance, you could have a shoulder yeah, to cry yeah. on. With the quarantine and everything, there have been no people, so you've been left without resources, you couldn't gather, you yeah. couldn't mourn mm-hmm. properly. Like, there was so much that COVID made so hard that it did make it harder to get over stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I know for me, unfortunately, um, I lost one of my fur babies. I lost my Lucy. Mm-hmm. Um, my Lucy. Your Lucy. My baby boy, my little Lucifer, um, I lost him. And one of the hardest things for me was that I could not be in the vet's office with him while he was being examined. Mm -hmm. And I got to go in and hold him before they put him down. But I had to wear a mask the entire time. I couldn't kiss him. I couldn't. I was so upset. And honestly, he seemed a little bit bothered by the mask. And that devastated me. Last thing he saw was you wearing a mask. Just your eyes. And that devastated me. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't even explain it. Like, it, as if losing some, like, an important part of your life Mm -hmm. like that isn't hard enough, but having all of those COVID restrictions made it even harder. And that is the thing that I am the most bitter about. You know, not just all the losses that COVID gave us, but even just how hard it made everything else to handle. It was so sad. I remember, like, remember in the summer when started, when things started getting better and, like, lifting and... We we started actually finding hope again. You were, like, able to kind of go out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I just remember when I lost my first cat. I don't know what he had. Some weird thing, but I lost Uh, him. FIV. Something like that, Because I remember you calling me very upset. I was so sad. And I remember (laughs) having to talk to your mom about what was happening. Because I know, because... Um, my family has raised quite a few um, cats over the years. And a few. <laughs> FIV has been a real problem up near yeah, our cottage, yeah. actually, and some of our friends had had a problem, so I'd seen the symptoms before, yeah. so I knew what it was, yeah. and I didn't want to tell you, but I yeah. that's why I chose to talk to your mom, because I, I knew that she would be a little more subjective <laughs> about exactly what was happening. Yeah, I was so upset. Because I was actually the one who warned her mm-hmm. about the second cat. Because you had two in the house, and I had said that if the first one is sick, there's no way the second one isn't going to get it. Probably already has it. It's not going to be very long. The second one was the one I've had for, I had him for a year almost, and he was like my, my, my baby. And the first one that passed away, I had him for a while, but I liked the, well, I didn't necessarily like the other one, but I had a closer. You had a closer bond. Because I had him longer. So losing him was. Devastating. It was so hard. It was like me losing my Lucy. Yeah. Like. Horrible. It was absolutely devastating. I remember because I was happy that day. <laughs> yeah, because you would come yeah. back from visiting with Aliyah and yeah, I. You went back I was so and happy. it was within 20 minutes mm-hmm. of, of me getting home. And I texted him yeah. like, Abby, he's he, dying. He, and you're like, Shh. you're like, fuck. <laughs> I, I, I literally sat there and I went, oh shit, no. Yeah. And I was like, great. Because I was like, I just cheered this kid up. I just got her back to me. And now she's in pieces again. Like, God, yeah. I just finished gluing you back together. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. I can't have another cat for another year, but it's okay. But I feel yeah, like okay. we have very much learned a lot about ourselves yeah. when it comes to COVID. Oh <laughs> some of it is good, and some of it is not so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we have very much learned how we handle different situations. Like, I know for me, I learned that I cannot live without competition because <laughs> um, I started entering, oh my God. <laughs> I started entering um, virtual races. Um, actually just two days ago, I completed a 200 kilometer run, not, not all in one go. I did not run for like 200 straight kilometers. I would be dead, but, um, I just completed a 200 kilometer run. Um, the one I did before that I think was about 150. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I'm choosing another one to go on. I haven't selected which one I'm going to do, but I'm very excited, but I've learned that I can't live without competition. I need some way of pushing myself because to me, if you're not competing for something, what's the point of living? Like, I know that that's, that's the like, point of living. I know that that's like an insane stance to take, but that's just the way I am. Even when I was younger, I was an extremely competitive kid. So to me, if I'm not working for something and I'm not working yeah. towards something, I get such bad sedentary depression where it's like, what does anything mean? What's the point of anything? Yeah. I don't live day to day. I live for moving forwards mm-hmm. towards a goal. And now I know that about myself. Yeah. I can't be idle. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because I went from working 
full time at the studio, a full time job, bartending on the weekends, and working at a local community rink during the winter on yeah. the weekends as well. And then I went to literally being locked in my apartment 24-7. Yeah. Like, my mental state yeah. was bad. I learned that I need people. Well, who know, who, yeah. who didn't know that? But <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I didn't. didn't. It, it was very difficult oh, for you. I was awful. Uh, that sort of quarantine. Because, I mean, I'm more of an introvert anyway. Yeah. And if I struggled, I can't I'm even not. imagine what you two I'm were going through. not. Especially when my dad was home for most of that, uh, too. That sucks. Your troll. My your troll, troll in the basement. Dad. The troll oh, in the basement. Who's, who's, who's growing, like, probably moss and mold on himself. Yeah, I swear he does, man. He just... His north side is covered in yes. moss. But, yeah, I learned that I needed people. I learned that, you know... Parts of my life before quarantine was, unknowingly to me, a life that I didn't really want. Because you I... You being straight. Yeah. <laughs> straight. 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 With giant and air quotes. I'm going to post a straight. TikTok of a visual of you coming out of the closet. Yeah. Okay. You do. Yeah. yeah. We'll, you do. We'll you do. We'll link it to this episode. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, you know, I realized, hey, wait, because I was so... I'm always so busy. What song is it, Aaliyah? You're very much you're <laughs> you're very much like me though because yeah. you live your life. You know, a lot of people work so that mm-hmm. they can do the things that they love. Yeah, we like, very much work because it is what yeah. we love. It yeah. is how we identify ourselves. Weirdly enough, is yeah. by our work ethic. And yeah. I, I feel like a lot of dancers yeah. are this way, where you kind of judge yourself like based on how much work you're putting into mm-hmm. stuff. And I think all of a sudden, having everything taken away, your job, your yeah. dance, your everything, you're just like. Who am I? What yeah. do I do? Who, yeah. Like, oh. What is my life yeah. without yeah, everything literally. that I work for? Like, yeah. who am I without this? I am my jobs. Yeah. yeah. I identify myself by my work ethic. I identified mm-hmm. myself, my personality was a mix between a teacher and a waitress. I yeah. identified myself by saying, yeah, I work basically three full-time yeah. jobs. And, what about it? And then it got really bad because I was always, I wanted to do things, but I couldn't find the energy to do it. So I was doing that, nothing. That has been I the remember, biggest yeah. problem. And I was so upset because I felt so... So it's the lack of motivation yeah, because felt, you're like, yeah. what's the point of I anything? I felt so useless. I'm like, yeah. I love to do these things, but why can't I seem to do yeah. them? You know? And that I was, the, that that was that, the biggest oh, struggle yeah. for you because even when we got yeah. back to dance, Charlie, convincing you to get up off your booty uh-huh. Uh-huh. and actually go and do something, it was hard to even convince yeah. you to stretch when we first went back over the summer. And I was like, Charlie, do you want to start learning your solos? And you were like, mm, not today. I'm kind of sore. And that is the response that you never would have given I me I wasn't before. even sore. I was mentally I, sore. I, I, was very, my body I remember sore. looking at Aaliyah and I was like, Aaliyah, I'm yeah. worried that Charlie's going to consider quitting. Yeah. I was like, I think she might be think, done. I, I think Charlie's wall. I was like, Charlie's hit the wall. I wasn't like, quarantine is ruined her. I wasn't even considering quitting. I was just... You had no motivation. I had no, no. Not at all. No mental motivation to get up and do it. I came in and I was wearing like a hoodie and like these giant sweats. I mean, when do I not wear that? But usually <laughs> I don't wear my hood up and I have like my hair down. I usually look nice. <laughs> that day I had my hair up. I was looking tired and Abby's like, Charlie, do you want to show Gracie a, like a move, like a trick? Yeah, because we yeah. were working with um, one of our little ones yeah. on contortion. Yeah. And I had asked you to demonstrate a move and even convincing you to do that. Like yeah. you kind of mm-hmm. half-assed it. Yeah. And then you're like, Abby, I'm too sore. I can't do it again. Yeah. And I remember just sitting there thinking to myself, I was like, Oof. oh my God. What's wrong? <laughs> how do I fix this? Because that's my big thing, right? Yeah. That's part of how I identify yeah. myself. I'm the fixer. Yep. You know, people are like, I'm the giver. I'm the... Bob the, the Builder. I'm... <laughs> I love you. I'm the fixer, are right? you the one that liked Bob the Builder? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Bob the Repairman. Bob the Repairman. Abby the rem- Repairwoman. The Repairwoman. <laughs> I, I am very much one of those people where I identify by being able to fix others. Because, I mean, I already know that I can't fix my own problems. No. That's why I fix everybody fix else. Everyone. But, you know, seeing you guys struggle and realizing that for the first time... I didn't know how to help anybody. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to fix this because I was going through it too. And I was like, if I can't even save myself with the same problem, how the hell am I going to help them? Yeah. It's like being in, you know, the middle of the ocean and realizing, oh my God, I don't know how to swim. And then also seeing you two drowning and I'm like, fuck, I don't know how to swim. How do I teach them how to swim so that they don't die too? (laughs) It was just, you know... The whole point of solving other people's problems is that they're not the same as my problems because I don't know how to solve my problems. Yeah. So how do you help somebody when they have the same problem as you and you don't know how to solve your own problems? Somehow you managed to fix me. 
I think it was, I don't know how. I, I think it was just time and yeah. you visiting you guys a lot helped yeah. me a lot. I I remember the first day that we got back together because oh I I took you guys up horrible. to the cottage <laughs> yeah. because yeah. I was originally gonna take all of our dance girls because it's a yearly thing we do but there were still so many restrictions it at was that like, point. Like it was five wasn't. people in a room or something. Yeah, it yeah. it wasn't gonna happen. So, so I took only three of us. So I ended up yeah. taking you guys, um, and I remember that entire first two days that we were there it was circulating between yeah. laughing and literally in the middle crying, of it just one of us crying. would start to cry and we would just have like this yep. full breakdown yeah. each all of all yeah. three of us had one because i think Aaliyah, yours was first yeah i know i think mine was second um the I, next morning i bottled mine up until like you were like the second to last yeah. night that we were there it took and you a while it took you a while I remember because, because uh, you were so numb and then it was just like being with us slowly kind of melted away that numbness and then the next thing i knew like you were shaking you were crying and i was like yeah. there it is do you remember when i got into the car and i was wearing like all black and i just sat there with my arms crossed the entire time the, the whole way up the and whole way up what's that, wrong that's with you that's when, you came that's up when me. i came out i was yeah. like I already know that you're gay, and you're like, yeah. It was just, we, we were all at different stages where Aaliyah was just ready to break at any yeah. second. Yeah. You know, my biggest thing, it, I was actually doing fine. Something separate set me off the next morning, mm -hmm. and then yeah, it, it was kind, it was kind of like a floodgate where, yeah. like, a little bit of water started seeping through the cracks, and, and then just, it, there was just so much pressure that it just burst the dam. Yeah. It wasn't intentional. Yeah. I probably, if it had not been for the situation that had happened that morning, I don't know that I would have broken yeah. down, but it yeah. was just too much at that point, and yeah. then yeah. everything came out. Yeah. And then with you, Charlie, I actually had to work quite hard to get you to open up. Because you were very just like closed down. Like you did not want to think about it. You did not want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then I remember just kind of poking at you. And then I knew once, once the, you, you know. You said one thing and I was like. Mm. Yeah, I, I saw, I saw the lip go and I was like, oh, 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 she's cracking. She's My breaking. Eyes, and like, go up. And yeah, the, the tears. The tears uh, start to well up. And I was like, oh, there she is. Yeah. yeah. And you're like. And you and Ali looked at each other. Yeah. And I was like, oh, there oh, we go. The happening. release. No, you're like, you said something like, oh, finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was your little reaction. True. We were waiting for yeah. it. And you were just so numb that it was like, how do we get yeah. her to break? Because you, you've you never been a numb person before. You've yeah. always been very forward with your emotions and thoughts and I feelings. Remember, I remember going to bed every night and going, why hasn't she cried yet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and then you did. And then yeah. we were like, ah, oh, there she is. Yeah. The whole time, like I usually sit with my legs wide open. And that sounds yeah, no ooh. really though i always sit like that or i'm like comfortable I, the whole time there until i started crying mm -hmm. i sat there with my legs closed and my arms even crossed, even your body was, language was very yeah. like closed off it was very like yeah. you looked like you were holding yourself together like, like yeah. literally like even physically like you were just trying to hold it all together talking. i wasn't even laughing that's something i never did no you were so numb i don't <laughs> think you could feel anything else and no. you were just so afraid of approaching all of these yeah. emotions and it just took a lot of convincing to get you to finally open up a little mm -hmm. bit and once you did then it was you know it sounds disgusting but as i always say it's like lancing an infected wound mm -hmm. right where you need to get all of the gross pus and everything yeah. out you need to clean it yep. but that Hurt. It hurts. It so hurts bad. so oh bad. God. And sometimes you don't even know where to start. And sometimes it's easier to go to somebody else. And with you looking in the other direction, just have yeah. them do the deed for you and just, have you know, stop that pain in a long time. Just take the scalpel and rip into it and get everything out. I love it when you carve me open. Yeah, me too. It it's a talent. <laughs> you don't even get it though. Like I'll tell her, I'm like, oh, you, you helped me, and you'll be like, but I didn't do anything. And that like, that's like the hardest part for me because I normally do look at you guys and I'm like, but I feel like I haven't done it. Stop <laughs> sniffing people. Why are you smelling me? I got a whiff of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your cookies. I think you. Oh my wow. Like no joke, I got like a. Oh, that's right. I thought you smelled bologna again. No, I was the last time you smelled bologna, bologna, you cried. Bologna. Yeah. I thought it was Michaelin. Michaelin, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I love you. I hope Michaela's not listening because no. I think she's gonna be very afraid listening to this yes. contest. Yeah. I know a couple of my other angel babies yeah. uh, have found us because they followed us on Instagram lately, and all I can say is that I'm so sorry, girls. I am so sorry. You never knew this side of me, and you never should have known this side of like, me. I love you, and I'm sorry. It's like Fight Club. Don't talk about yeah. Fight Club. The, <laughs> the first rule about Fight Club, you don't God. talk about Fight Club. The first rule about gay by gay, gay, gay by gay, guy. gay big guy. Gay guy. Gay guy. <laughs> guy, by guy. guy. Uh, the first rule is to um, share with everybody because... Yeah. Um, we want more listeners. Yes. Uh, but, but no, to my sweet little baby angels out there, I'm so sorry. I think you guys suspected this side of me because I say a lot of things and dance. <laughs> I think they so. both suspected you. I don't think anyone suspected me. No, they think you're just like this angel oh, person. And the number one thing I get is, Abby, you're like the straightest person I know. And I'm just like, <laughs> if only you knew the truth. 
<laughs> I'm not. Done. But COVID has been a very hard yeah. year. And, you know, even just talking about it, it feels a little bit cathartic, just mm-hmm. everything we went through. Um, but moving forward, I think, is the easiest thing to do. And, yeah. yes, there is still quite a bit of a way to go. You know, there's the whole vaccine thing going on. Mm-hmm. And there's so many questions because the future is so unknown at this point. But all I can say is just... Into the unknown! <laughs> Into the unknown! God. Um, but all I can say is just, you know... Take it gay by gay. Take it gay by gay. <laughs> <laughs> Take it gay um, by talk gay. Talk to people. Tell the people in your life that you love them. Yes. If you love them. If you love, <laughs> if them. You love them. Talk to the people you know. I mean, um, I don't appreciate either of these two, but here I am. Reach uh, out to friends and family. Um, check check on your peeps. Make peeps. sure they're doing good. The best thing I can say is love that your if, if you have somebody who has gone quiet on you and you're messaging them and they're not answering, mm-hmm. keep pushing. Yep, I know yeah. normally I would say, give them their space. No, 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 keep pushing. They yeah. need somebody, yeah. like, you, they need somebody yeah. who is willing to go the full mile and go, I know you're not okay. Yeah. Talk to me. Yep. Because that is one of the hardest things to find right now. And, you know, be kind to yourself. Like, oh, it's absolutely. totally normal to not have that much motivation. Like, it sucks. I call it sedentary depression yeah. for a reason. It's yeah. when you sit still for so yeah. long that you start to become a block of wood. Yep. You and feeling you yet. don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. You don't want anything. Yep. It's just every day sucks. Yeah, every day feels like forever. Room during quarantine. Gosh. Oh, the the messy house yeah. depression. It oh. was like you know, like the show, like the hoarders thing. Hoarders. It was like that. I, I hey, feel was like that. I feel like that's almost how everybody's mm-hmm. everything was yep, looking. Yeah. Like I know my apartment was heading in that direction my, because I like that. I yeah. didn't even have the motivation to clean. No. Mm-hmm. Like, finding the motivation to even get up and, like, wash your hair and everything yeah. was, you know, why? hard some days. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it was that mentality of why I'm not I doing anything. I honestly think yeah. there was, like, um, a little molding of myself in my bed for how long I stayed in bed. I would believe it. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure I'm pretty sure my desk chair has, like, an imprint of my of flat butt. ass <laughs> cheeks imprinted into it. And there's probably just, like, a small little divot yeah. where my butt sits. <laughs> probably where your cats sit when you're not there. Probably both of them, like, <laughs> this, one sits in one, this one sits in one butt cheek, this one yeah. sits in the other butt cheek. Yep. yep. Oh, yes. I believe it. <laughs> God. But, you know, um, in the next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the other non-COVID-related yeah. struggles that we had. A little bit more happy things, I'd say. Happy. Uh, better than COVID, at better least. Better than, yeah. Um, but that's all for this episode, and we will talk at you in the next one. Talk at you? We're not talking with them. I was going to say, I'm not talking um, to them necessarily, because they can't respond to me. Talking to their ears. Um, I mean, this is a microphone. You can feel me, right? I know you guys Stop can. it! They can't! Take it, gay by gay, guys. Bye.